Welcome back inside Studio B. We are live with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Jason Shepard alongside Austin Colley. And we're talking some BYU football right now with the brand new tight ends coach for the Cougars. He's Kevin Gilbride. Kevin, welcome into Studio B. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So look, uh, this is a, it's a bit of a homecoming for you. It's been a while since you've been here, uh, but uh, you played one season before ultimately traveling or uh, transferring to Hawaii. Uh, what brought you back to Provo? Well, <laughs> that's a loaded question. Not loaded, but uh, there's a lot of answers to that question. Um, I would say this. Let me just start off with I've always had great respect for BYU. I didn't transfer from BYU because for any other reason other than I thought I was getting beat out at quarterback, and I was. <laughs> Um, so I went to University of Hawaii after that. But um, getting back to BYU really was a result of my relationship with A-Rod. Um, and for whatever reason, when, when I was an 18-year-old true freshman coming into <laughs> Provo, Utah at BYU, he was a redshirt senior, had been on a mission, was married, had a dog, and was 25 years old, and we became <laughs> close. And, and uh, you know, I used to go over to their house and, and have some dinner and hang out with them. And, we stayed close even when I was in Hawaii and he started his coaching career and then when I became a coach. Um, and just from a relationship standpoint and then also a, a football standpoint, we'd talk ball. You know, we'd talk technique, we'd talk scheme. Um, and we've always held each other in a high regard in that fashion and that, and, you know, thought a lot of each other as coaches. And, and at one point have always tried to try to get the other guy on a staff that we were on together, yeah. knowing that we'd bring value. It just so happens that it's happening right now, and it's happening at BYU to complete the full circle, uh, which is pretty special. Coach, we know that that uh, going from college to the NFL, a little bit different, right, as far as competition, as far as uh, the, the type of coaching that you're going to get in the league compared to co uh, coaching in the NFL, or sorry, in, uh, in college. What do you think the experience that you've garnered, right, because you have had the unique experience of coaching in the NFL, what – are some of the main points or the main coaching uh, differences, I guess, uh, that you're going to be able to bring to the to the BYU group? Well, I don't know if it's – to me, it's not like there's this great answer. Okay. Meaning like, uh, oh, I've got this knowledge because I coached in the NFL. I don't believe that. Okay. What I believe is football's football and that the development of your young men from a football standpoint in, in life – carries through no matter what level of coaching you're coaching at and what level of football. Um, I think my, my experience and the things that I've been through is really what I'm going to be able to bring to the table, more so than the fact that I coached in the NFL. It's my experiences. It's the defenses that we've attacked. It's um, how do you find matchup problems when you necessarily don't have the most skilled guys in comparison to what the defense has. Those are some of the things that I can bring to the table. Um, more from experience than it being NFL to college. Gotcha. How do you feel like what you want out of the tight ends fits in with what A-Rod wants with the overall offensive scheme? Well, he wants them to play well. And, and to me, that's, that's the number one thing. And that's, that's really what I'm focused on. Like, I want to develop our guys. And, and the only way to develop them the, the right way, in my opinion, is to put them in very difficult situations and have them fail at it. And then they'll come back and then fail again. And they're going to get discouraged, and I'm going to have their back, and I'm going to make sure that they do it again and do it again until they start to put their body in calloused positions and know that subtle adjustment that they have to make, whether it be creating separation from a defender or um, sustaining a block, whatever the case may be, um, keeping their pad level out, how it is. I mean, we could go on and on and on. But in order to get to develop and be a good football player, you have to put yourself into those challenging situations. I think that's really what A-Rod wants me to do is to get those guys to play well. And, and that's what I'm planning on doing is developing those young men. So piggybacking on that question, you've had an opportunity. You know, you said you've been looking at the, the future recruiting pool, guys coming off of missions. You have looked at or, or at least taken a, a glance at the film of the guys that you have in the room, one of them being Keanu Hill, right, which will be a new addition. Yep. Uh, I think the fans love Keanu, love his size, love his ability as a receiver, and now taking that ability into the tight end room. What have you seen, uh, one, from watching Keanu uh, that you have, uh, and also the other guys in the room? What, what are the, some of the things that you like about what they bring to the table? I don't want to talk specifics okay. because I don't know enough. I haven't watched enough film on each guy yet. Okay. Um, but from a, from a personality and a mentality standpoint, I think they have the right approach, especially Keanu, um, having watched some of his film, the way that he blocks on the perimeter, the way he goes and attacks the football. Um, I have not, I can't say that 
this is where he needs to improve. Here's how we're going to attack things. We're going to put him in those challenging situations that I talked about previously and watch him grow, and then we'll see from there. But I think overall it's a, it's a good unit in the fact that, um, that they all care, they're all talented, and it's a matter of trying to get the most out of them. Where has the, the tight end position changed the most over the last decade or maybe even the last five years? Because it, it's a position that has evolved in terms of what's expected out of the tight ends. That's exactly what it is, it, to, to a T. Um, you'd love to find in, in the NFL even, like, you'd love to find your Rob Gronkowski's around every corner. They don't <laughs> exist. So what you need to do is you need to find a guy with a particular skill set and then develop the other skill set that he's not quite as good at. And he doesn't mean he has to be dominant in that other area. He just needs to be able to execute it and understand where the challenges are, right? And if he can do that and hold off long enough, say he's cutting off on the backside, you know, on yeah. the backside of an inside zone play and hold off and strain enough and then react and finish for the back to scoot through and then stretch the field on a vertical, You've got something. So he's got to be able to do multiple things in the, in the pass game and the run game. And if you're more of a dominant blocker, you've got to be able to create separation on a stick route, catch a contested catch, and knife up the field and fall, fall forward for five yards or seven yards or whatever the case may be. But uh, my point is you're not going to find the perfect specimen everywhere you look. It doesn't exist. So you need to be able to find guys who have particular skill sets and then develop the side that's not quite as good, that might not be as dominant as some other guys in that area, but he can hold up enough. So we know that you, you, you come from a uh, football family background, right? Football runs thick in the veins, <laughs> right? Uh, what, what's your dad up to now? He... Uh, Sports run thick in the, in the family, okay, by the sports. way. <laughs> I've got a, a cousin who's a basketball coach in college and my uncle who's a basketball coach in college. Oh, wow. A couple of uh, cousins who are all-American swimmers, so sports in Love general. That. But football in my particular um, aspect. But dad is doing uh, research in, uh, you know, pre-game research for uh, the Manning cast. And so he's been doing this for years, like since he retired in 2014. 13, excuse me, um, he's been doing uh, background information for the color commentators yeah. and the uh, and the play-by-play -play guys for whatever the case may be. It could be Sunday night football, it could be a regular 1 o'clock game, you know, for CBS, for ESPN, whatever the case may be. He's been doing that for years, and so Eli knew that. And so as soon as they started their Manning cast, he called him and asked him to do that. Uh, one thing that's great for my dad is he feels like now, as he's putting this preparation together, he can just talk ball, and those, he knows those guys get it. Yeah. You know, whereas he doesn't have to over-explain a few things. The, you, you mentioned, obviously, who, who your dad is. I, how often, because you guys obviously have the same name, mm -hmm. how, how often when... Because I know there were some people when BYU announced that Kevin Gilbride was going to be the new tight ends coach, there's probably some that immediately thought, wait, did we, we hired Kevin Gilbride. <laughs> like, how, often does that, how often does that happen? Less than I would have thought, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I, I think uh, like I, we now like always tag an M with right. my name because yeah. my, our middle names aren't the same, so I'm not a junior. Yeah. So, uh, so it's Kevin M. Gilbride. Um, when we actually worked together at the Giants, um, I didn't go by Kevin at all. Like Coach Coughlin came into uh, the office before he hired me, and he said, "Do you have any nicknames?" And I said, "Well, I got a lot of nicknames, Coach. What do you, wanna, you know, what do you want to call me?" And uh, and he said, "Well, what's your family call you?" And I said, "KM," and that stands for Kevin Michael. And my I have a cousin named Kevin Thomas, and my dad's Kevin or Big Kev. Uh, so on my name plates, on everything, and what people called me at the Giants was KM. Yeah. So that's that was the, the distinction that Coach Coughlin wanted to make there. Um, but everywhere I've gone, you just, I roll with the punches with that. I mean, it is what it is. I, I feel like I've, I've stood on my own merit for a while yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> any chance we're going to see uh, Dad at the, any of the, uh, the football games coming up? Yeah, I'd, I'd like him to. Maybe you can talk to him, talk him into showing up. There we go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, we'll, see what, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> no, he'll show up. He'll nice. be here. Best, best tight end you've coached? Uh, that's a great question. Because there's so many different aspects, and we touched on that too. Like, it's this guy's great in this area, this guy's great in this area. I would say this the guy who got the most out of his ability would be Rhett Ellison, who I coached at the Giants. Um, the guy who was the most talented, most explosive was Evan Ingram. Um, and then the guy that I'm most proud of would be Will Ty. All three played with the Giants. Okay. That's a, that's, a, that's a good little list. That's nice. Well, and, and decisive. You, you knew exactly where you are going with that. <laughs> All right, what, last thing before we wrap it up. We were talking before we started the interview, and it's going to be spring ball before we get here. What, what, what do you want to accomplish? What's sort of on the agenda between now and the start of spring ball for you? 
continue to get to know the guys. I, I feel like if you truly, you can't really, they can't trust me and they won't feel like I truly have their back until they really know who I am. And that's, that's really been the, the focus is to truly get to know the guys, not just on the surface, but start to develop the relationship. I know nothing happens immediate like that or, or you know, that make it easy. And that's not any, even fun if yeah. it's <laughs> that easy. Uh, but that process has started, which is good. And, and it will continue because I think on their side, they want to get to know me and I certainly want to get to know them. And that's only going to help. It's only going to help as far as me understanding how to coach them, how to teach them and for them to trust me more. Well, Kevin, we uh, appreciate you stopping by. We do want to, and a little explanation. So people that come on the show, um, we have something called the BYU Sports Nation Karma, and we bestow it upon all of our guests. <laughs> and good things tend to happen for them. It's real. Thank it, you. It's I a real it. So we are giving you the BYU Sports Nation Karma, and we thank you for coming in. We're excited uh, to have you on, on the staff. So thanks for, uh, for coming in today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, Coach, happy great, to be here. great to have you. Great to, great to have you back. Uh, Back where it all started. Yeah, back where it all started, man. Yeah, yeah, thank Excited you. Excited to see what happens.